Hi everyone, welcome to lecture two. This is Intro to Machine Learning. Uh, in this video, you're going to learn about data pre-processing. We'll talk, talk about the basic concept behind data pre-processing, and we'll look at examples of how to import data and then create feature vectors. The tools that I'm using are Python. So if you're familiar with Python, that's good. And another prerequisite is that you need to have Anaconda installed because we'll be using some libraries that come with the Anaconda installation. So if you, you don't have Anaconda installed as such, you can go and check my video on Anaconda installation. It's video two in the playlist Intro to Programming with Python. Okay, so we have looked at this roadmap in lecture one when we said that these are different parts of any machine learning uh, implementation, right? So the first one was pre-processing, then, then the actual learning, uh, and then evaluation, and then finally prediction, right? Now, as you can see in the picture itself, pre-processing is an integral part of, as I said, any machine learning implementation, and it's an important part of uh, machine learning implementation. So in this video, we are going to get started with that, right? So this it itself involves uh, multiple steps, data pre-processing. So it begins with importing data, importing libraries, and then creating feature vectors. Right? So what is all this, if, if you're not familiar with them already, right? So um, as I said, in this video, I will cover two important things, that's importing libraries and importing the data set, and then also creating feature vectors. But even before we get started with that, I wanted to talk about what exactly this feature vector is and what exactly are dependent and independent variables. We need to be familiar with these definitions because we, we are going to use them a lot going forward, right? So uh, I'll show you the data set that I'm using in a short while, but just to give you an idea what it involves, what it, con what, what it con contains, is a purchase uh, data. So I have this like customer information, let us assume, right? So I have like customers uh, attributes, for example, the age of the customer, the state to where the customer resides, and then maybe the gender and so on, right? So let's say I have all this information and then I sell a product. I am a, a an online uh, shopping website, right? So I'm interested in find, finding out uh, whether a particular customer purchased something or not, right? So essentially my outcome here is yes or no, depending on like whatever the age of the customer is. Let's say the, the customer lives in New York and it's a female. And similarly, let's say 35 and then maybe New Jersey, male, no, and so on, right? So I have all this data. And based on this information, based on the customer attributes, I'm interested in predicting whether the customer purchases this product or not, right? And I will obviously base my prediction on the data that I already have. So I have collected this data from my current website. So I have ages of different customers and then their state and gender. And then I'm trying to predict, uh, and then I'm trying to create a relationship between whether the person is going to buy something or not. Right, so this outcome variable of some of somebody, something buying or not is the dependent variable, right? So in which in our example is purchase, yes or no. So this is my dependent variable. It's also called the outcome, response, or target variable. So whenever you see any of those terms, you should know that this is the dependent variable we are talking about, right? This is what we wish to predict in future based on like whatever data, whatever information we have. Now, the rest of the variables are somehow uh, related to this outcome, right? So the age, state, gender is in some way or the other in which obviously we need to figure out is impacting this outcome variable, right? So all these, these input variables together are known as independent variables. These are also called the feature input or predictor variables, right? And which is why we call this entire set of these feature or independent variables as a feature vector, right? Because I'm interested in all of these. Right? And one notation that we'll use throughout is that this feature vector is often uh, represented by this X, right? So X is my feature vector, right? And it can comprise of these different, for example, let's say my age was X1 and then state was X2 and gender was X3 and so on, right? So this is a vector that comprises of all these different features within my data set, right? So this is my feature vector and then what I'm, I'm interested in in this entire machine learning implementation is that there is a relationship and y is my, uh, I'm denoting y uh, as the dependent variable. So there is a relationship that exists between y and x, 
right? And I don't know what that a relationship is, and that's what my job is to figure that out, right? And so this y is a function of this feature vector. And then maybe like in my prediction, there is some error, some noise I'm not exactly able to predict, but I'm close enough, right? So this is, uh, this is a larger picture of any um, sort of machine learning model that we build, right? So there's a relationship between dependent and independent variable. And there, there might be some error. We'll talk more about that going further. But yes, this is what we are interested in. Right, so now we know the definitions, dependent variable, independent variable. Now let's go back to Spider and see um, how to actually uh, implement all of this, how to get our feature vector and our dependent variable, which is uh, Y separated, right? So let me show you the data set that I'm using. Let me escape from this, okay, keep. Okay, so here's the data set that I'm using. As I said, I just created this because I'm, I work a lot on recommender systems. So the customer data comes uh, to my mind. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. So I just like made this up, uh, different states with ages and genders and also salary. So there's another feature there. There's another independent variable there. And whether they bought something or not is my um, dependent variable, right? This is my why, right? So this data exists in a file called customer underscore data dot CSV. And I'm going to read it inside uh, my Python environment and then create my feature vector and my dependent variable, right? So the first step in data pre-processing is, let me write it down. So this is the file that we are going to create for data pre-processing, right? So let me write that down. Okay, so this, this is step one is importing libraries. So what are libraries are we using? We are using NumPy, uh, Matplotlib, and Pandas. So NumPy is essentially used to build uh, arrays or data frames, right? So uh, arrays are a structure which is similar to something like this, like a tabular form, and this kind of makes our, our data organized. And then this NumPy comes with a lot of uh, methods within it that help us manipulate that data, right? So the first library that I'm using is NumPy, right? So uh, all I'll do is import. And if you're familiar with Python, you know that we use, uh, in order to import any library, we use the keyword import and as NP just like short form of NumPy because I don't want to type NumPy again and again. So I'm just doing import NumPy as NP. The second one is for plotting purposes. So we might want to visualize whatever we import, right? So for that is matplotlib. So I'm, 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 I'm just using uh, pyplot most likely. So that's the only, that's a specific uh, method within my, uh, that's a specific function within my matplotlib a library that I'll be using. And let me also create an act, like an alias for that, which is plt, right? And then finally import pandas. Now this is important because this is also going to help, uh, this is going to help me create my data frame, or this is going to help me create my vectors. Right, so let's let's see how that works. Import pandas as pd, and we'll make use of this library a lot. Right? So let me execute this code and see if this um, import happens. Yeah, so I don't get an error, that's fine. Now step two is to read the data set in, right? So I have to import the data set. As, as I said, I have to create, first of all, create a data frame, and then I have to create a feature vector and a dependent variable, right? So let me do that. Let me create a variable called data frame. And then uh, the, uh, the library that I'll be utilizing to, to read that is pd. So because notice here, I named pandas as pd, so now I can use it as it is, right? Dot, and the moment you do dot, you get all the required uh, methods that are available, right? So I'm using read underscore CSV. Notice there are read underscore Excel, read underscore clipboard, and all of those also available, right? But my file is a CSV file, so I'm doing a read underscore CSV. And then the name of the file. Right, so in quotes, I have to give the name of the file. Let me double check what the name of the file is. So it's customer underscore data, right? So customer underscore data, right? So I'm going to read in, and I think this is uppercase. It has to be the exact name. Okay, so, uh, okay. So I'm getting this error that this file does not exist, which is, okay, yeah, that's a good catch. I should give the extension as well, right? So here it is. Yeah, good that we got that error and we got rid of it, right? So I have to give the exact extension that it's a CSV file. So I did customer underscore data dot CSV. 
Now, now step two is to go and create my feature vector and my um, dependent variable vector. So I have to kind of split this uh, such that I'm able to see both, right? So now, right now I just like read in a data frame that has all this together. Now I, I'm going to utilize my feature vector in a certain way and I'm going to utilize my dependent variable in a certain way. So I need to split them up. So how do we do that, right? So I'm naming my feature vector as X just to maintain consistency. And then the way this is done is now my data frame is an object, is a, is a pandas type object, right? So I can go in and, and utilize different uh, methods that are available with Python, right? So the first one is iLock. What iLock does is it, it locates columns by index, right? So I'm assuming most of you are familiar with a range and index and all of that. So the way this dot iLock works is that you have to specify what all rows you want to import and what all columns you want to import. So you have to give the range of all of them. So the first one is going to be rows and the second one is going to be columns, right? So you have to give the range of those. So how do we give them, give the range of those? So this goes back to our lecture on lists. If you're not familiar with that, please go back and check that. So here, what I'm going to do is I need all the rows in X, right? So I need all of this information in X, right? So all the rows. So for that, I'll just like write a colon. So you know that this is how we specify all the data in Python. So I'm, I'm, I'm using that. And then next is I need all the columns except the last one, because the last one is going to be my dependent variable, right? So for that, my column is going to be all of them minus one, or I can specifically go and do zero up to four. That, that will also work, right? So I have like four columns, so go from zero up to four. This is how this works. Okay, so that's all the columns except the last one. And then this is important, we have to do a dot values here. And what this dot value does is it returns the values of the columns inside a NumPy array. Right, so that's why I'm doing that. So that's my X, right? I can actually go ahead and run this. And then even print X to kind of see what this did, right? This is important for me. Right, so as you can see, I have this, this array wherein I have information of every row and then I don't have the information of the last column, right? But that last column has to save in a variable called Y. So again, I'm repeating the same process, except that I'll use iLock to locate the data of all the rows, so this is the colon for all the rows, and only the last column. So this I think most of you who are familiar with Python know that this is minus one, and then values, right? So this is my dependent variable, and then let's go and print this. Right? So obviously I have this like uh, no yes, no yes, all of that outcomes, so that's, that's okay. Okay, so with this I end this video. In the next video we'll talk about dealing with missing data, encode categorical variables, and train test split.